Hi everyone, Tasha here from Start a School Crochet. Uh, today we're going to do a little tutorial for C2C in companion to my corner to corner calculator for how big your blanket size will be. So what this is, a corner to corner is used as a graph and it works from one corner to another corner and it goes diagonally instead of working in rows, but you can obviously work a graph in rows too, but the corner to corner blanket works this way, which is really interesting. You can create some really great patterns with it. So for the tutorial, um, I wanna just give you an idea about what C2C is, how to make some color changes, and also um, how to do some decreasing and some increasing and what that means with um, corner to corner because it is it can be kind of confusing so and also another question that a lot of people ask including myself is uh, how big will my blanket be so that's a, a universal question because everybody has a different tension and everybody's using a different hook size a different yarn size so the calculator I made will help you determine how big your blanket will be according to how many squares you have in your graph as well as a swatch that you make and I'll go into that the link will be down below for the other video on how to use the calculator it's really simple not complicated at all so don't be scared so let's get started on this little swatch pattern and I'll show you guys how to do some some C2C okay so what we're gonna do first is I'm gonna work we're going to work three squares using red and to start go ahead and grab your yarn I'm using 24-7 um, cotton a four millimeter hook and so the first thing you do like with most crochet is we're going to go ahead and make a slip knot And I'm going to zoom just a little bit. And so for corner to corner, you can start out using six chains or five chains. Um, the difference between those two will, the six chains, you'll have a little bit bigger square. Um, and the holes will be slightly bigger. I'm going to show you what I mean by that. The holes between each of the squares right here, those tend to be really large when you use the um, six method when you chain six and then chain three between each of the squares I like to chain five and then chain two between each of the squares because it leaves a slightly smaller hole you can see it's pretty can't really see holes that much but so for this tutorial I'm going to chain five one two three four and five and then with C2C we're going to work three double crochets into the very first three chains. So you're going to start by counting down one, two, three, and work into the third chain from the hook and do a double crochet. And then go into the next chain and do a double crochet. Then the third chain, do a double crochet. And there's your first square. So we've made our first square. Now we're going to work our second square. And a good indication of where you're started is um, where your tail is. So that's going to be your square because your tail comes off and goes to the right. So with C2C, you kind of work a little backwards and forwards. But so here we're going to do the next row. Technically, that would be row one that we just worked, which is right here. And we worked, it's going to lay this, this way. So now we're going to extend it and then work row two. So the way you extend it is you're going to go ahead and chain five again. And then work in the third chain from the hook again. and do three double crochets in each chain until you reach the 
the base part. So there we have our extension and we've actually worked this square. So we've, we have this square and this square worked right now. And it looks a little crazy and kind of confusing, but what you do here is you want to bring up, if they were side by side like this, on your first square, you want to flip it, bring it up side by side like that, and then work into the space of the last double crochet that you did. Sorry about that. Okay. And then do a slip stitch. And here we're going to make our next square, which is going to be this one. So we're not going to do an extension, we're just going to chain two. And then work three double crochets into that space. So we've got one, two, And three and there we've worked our first little section right there so for the next for the next row we're going to go ahead and change colors and we're going to work it in orange so how to change colors is fairly simple and it's the same the same method you use when you join using um, row to row crochet and what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and pull out the very top part of our last stitch reinsert your hook and of course you can you know before you even complete this stitch on the next one you can use a new color then add your new yarn to your hook and pull through to complete your your stitch so there we have our new color, very easy. And so with the pattern, you can see we're going to extend off here. So we're gonna chain five over here and then work our way back up this way. So we're gonna chain five, three, four, five, and here we're going to work back down the chain into the third chain from the hook. Double crochets, three of them in one in each chain. The joins are always, um, they always get a little bit loose, just no big deal. Just tug on them if they get loose. And so here we've made our first square of the new color and we want to do the same things we did before is join them. So how we do that is you kind of, you have to flip it and put it side by side and then go into that top double crochet space and do a slip stitch and that joins them. And then chain two. Three, three more double crochets. Sometimes it's easy to fold this little piece back to get it out of the way when you're working. And so here, we're going to do our join into the next double crochet space there slip stitch, chain two, three more double crochets, and our row will be complete. And I recommend um, marking the front of what would be the front of your project with a stitch marker or loop through a little piece of yarn or something so you know which direction you're facing. Um, it really helps when you're working a big graph. So here we have our comparison. And we've got our one, 
two, and three rows. It's one, two, three. So now let's go ahead and we'll make changing up the colors again to yellow. Just so you can get used to color changes. So we'll do the next row in yellow. I'm going to do the same thing and just kind of pull out the last part of that stitch and then go ahead and add the yellow. Then just kind of pull them tight. C2C, you have a lot of tails in C2C, but if you do color changes, but you can also do just a one color blanket or project. But the fun of C2C is you get to work any kind of graph that you can. So go ahead, since we're going to do an extension now, or what they would be calling an increase, or what I call an increase, because we're increasing the length of the blanket. And that, or the scarf or hat, whatever you want to make into C2C. But so when you're doing increases, what they mean is you're increasing the size, both horizontally and you're increasing it vertically as well. So when you do the increases, you chain five on one end. And then when you work your way back up, then you'll be working back down this way. And then you would be making your increase here. Five. Okay, so let's do this. And chain five. Work into the third chain. And then we're going to flip it to bring that part up to this part. And go ahead, slip stitch. So I'll cut to the end of this row. And when we come back, we're going to do a color change in the middle of a row so you can see what that's like. And also teach you how to carry colors. So when you carry the color, behind the stitches. Okay. All right, so I've reached the end of my yellow row. And I'm not sure did I, yes, there we go. So we're actually up here right now. And what we're going to do is I'm going to work one more yellow there. And then we're going to do two orange or three orange. And then we're going to work another yellow right here. So that will show you how to do color changes in the middle of a row and also show you how to carry the color behind there. And you'll see that because we're working back down this row, back down this way, we're going to do our increase right here. So, oops. And remember, you'll keep track of that just by marking the front of your, your work so you know where your tail is always going to be coming off the bottom right-hand side. So one, two, three, four, five. And then we're going to work back into the chain just like we did before. Move the little graph for a moment. Okay, so here is where we're going to make our color change. And we want to flip our work again and bring it up next to it. But we want this next square that's going to be right here to be orange. So I'm going to grab the orange yarn and we're going to do a color join. And we do the color joins when you make the slip stitch into the space of the double crochet. So instead, you can just let the yellow drop 
add the new color over your hook, pull it through and complete your slip stitch with the new color like that. Let your tail drop and then just kind of grab them so they're tight and here's where you're going to chain two and then complete. So, well, before we do the completion of the, the thing, the yellow color you can carry underneath and in the stitches of the next yarn too. So you can actually w w pick it back up over here. So we're going to do that. So let's take the yellow and just like we carry colors when we're doing rows, you're going to work it into the stitches as you do your double crochets. Like that. And then we do our join and when we do our slip stitch join into the next, we're just going to let the yellow yarn kind of lay alongside. It's always tempting to just do a single crochet, isn't it? <laughs> So chain two, continue doing your three double crochets, hiding that yellow yarn inside. Carry it up one more time. Some people don't like to carry um, yarn in C2C. Some people do. It's completely your preference. Um, it depends on the colors, really. Sometimes if you have a light color with a black behind it, you might not want to carry that black because it really shows up, but with this color here, you can hardly see the yellow even transitioning up through those stitches through the back, so it's just for your preference and trial and error, really. Trial and error, error, error. <laughs> So here, we're going to switch back to yellow because our last square is yellow. So let's, what we're going to do is do the join and we've carried our yarn in back. You can pull it, loosen it, stretch it however you want. You might want to stretch it just a little bit because you want your blanket to be flexible. And if that's too tight, it's going to pull on it and mess up the tension of the blanket. But Okay, so here we're going to drop our yellow, I mean our orange. Just pick up the yellow. Oh, I did that off screen. So we're going to drop the orange, insert, pick up the yellow and pull through. And then just chain two and work your last square as normal. There we go. And you just pull that tight. And so there, we've completed our little squares. Just like that. Pretty awesome, huh? And so the next one we'll do is we'll work back up using the yellow. And since we're at a point right now where we're going to start working decreases, that's what we're going to do because our blanket stopped right here, right? Our little swatch. So we have one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. So our next one is going to be working up. And this is actually not as complicated as it sounds. So if you look at it like it kind of looks that way, and it was to me at first, I was like, oh no, how do I do that? So what you're going to do is this square is right there get that even. So we're going to fill in this square. So what would you do to get from point A to point B? This is the most simple solution to get from here to here. And what that is, is a slip stitch. So go ahead and turn. And then slip stitch into the, the top three 
of the double crochets and then once into the double crochet space. There we have it. So now we're up to this point where we can just create our new square right there. And we do that by going ahead and chaining two and then working your regular old double crochets into the edge. And then continue on working into each one of the spaces there. I'm going to pause it and we'll come back at the end of the row. So now we've worked up to this point. I'm going to flip it so you can see because we're actually, this is the front, and we've done this square right here, and we're working our way back up this way. See, because C2C is directional, so we just, we did this one, and now this one's working back up this way. And so here, we have only have one, two, three, four squares. One, two, three, four squares. We've done it, but we're not connected right there. So let's go back, and we're going to make our connection with a slip stitch, just like before. Like that. And we so ask ourselves, well, how do we get from here to here? Because our next our next square is going to be right here. So we're like, oh, how do I get there? How do I get there? Well, slip stitch. So flip it and work back down the other way. Slip stitching into the top three tops of the three double crochets and then once into the double crochet space and there we are we're back at the beginning so we can make our next square which is right there okay so now that we've done that um, I'm gonna rip it back you can rip it back with me too if you want and we're gonna we're gonna rip it back to the point of the corners right here right there and there, and I'm going to show you how to do it as a rectangle. So when you have two different sides that are asymmetrical, so say the one, two, three, four, five, six squares, and this one's one, two, three, four, five. So a lot of the graphs I, I work are 80 squares by 90 squares, so this will help you work um, a pattern that's rectangular. So let's rip it back until we come to our square corners. Okay, so now we have our one, two, three, four, five. That's one, two, three, four, five. And we have five, one, two, three, four, five that way. So what we're gonna do because this graph has six horizontally and five vertically. We're going to leave five alone, and we're going to extend on number si on the horizontal row, which is six. So we're going to do an extension here by chaining five and working our normal double crochets back into that chain. Then we're going to join like we normally do. Chain two. And work your double crochets. Join. I'll cut this and we can come back. Okay, so now we've actually worked our six down here. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six. So you see we've made that extension there or increase there. 
And then we're gonna, we already worked back up this way, and now we have the flat end there. So similar to what we did before with making the square, we're just going to join into the top of this double crochet there, slip stitch it, turn it, and slip stitch back down those three to get us back to our beginning point where we can make our next square without doing an increase right there. So that puts us right back there. So we've got two this way and it's longer this way and stays the same height and gets longer. And then you just work your normal rows down and if it extends out further, then you do more extensions, and if not, you bring it back in like we did before. So, golly, I really hope that this helps you guys. Um, it took me a minute to get C2C, especially the increasing and the decreasing because the terminology I didn't quite understand. I was like, but you're not increasing. <laughs> but I, I didn't see it the way that, they, that it was supposed to be seen, which is you're increasing the width or you're increasing the height and all the flipping and stuff got confusing but it just takes practice trust me you can get it if I can get it you can get it I know you can all right so please subscribe if you have any questions about this video or anything I'm happy to answer them um, any tips and tricks you have on C2C leave them down below because I love to learn new things and I hope you do too and that's it. So I hope you guys have a great day. Happy crocheting. Bye. Oh, and the C2C calendar, or cal cal I keep saying calendar, calculator, um, that's in my blog and the description's down below. So if you want to head on over there and give it a shot, um, please share it with your friends. Thanks a lot. Bye.